In this example, we're going to look at a scatter plot, find a regression line, the equation of a regression line, and then use it to predict values. Uh, we're going to do it all with the graphing calculators that we have, and I'll walk you through the steps how we do that. So what we're looking at in this table, um, table value shows the weekly sales data based on marketing research for I believe this is uh, boxes of cereal, uh, the price per box given here, and then the number of boxes that were sold. So we can see that as the price per box went up, well, then the sales went down, as you could imagine. As the price gets cheaper and cheaper, sales are bigger. Okay, so can we describe this um, with a linear model? Okay, so here's how we're going to do this on the calculator. First thing I'm going to do is go into stat, and it's right here. It's got the word stat on it. And then the first option, edit, I'm going to hit enter on edit. And we've got these lists. You see across the top it says L1, L2, L3, etc. If there are numbers in a list, like say you've got some numbers here, just go up and highlight the list number and hit the clear button. And it will delete all those numbers in the list. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do, let's do it this way. Let's type in the price per box numbers in L1, and let's type in the boxes sold numbers in L2. And with those numbers typed in, we're now ready to go to the next phase of this problem. What we'd like to do now is have the calculator plot the point. We'd like to see a scatter plot of this data, and our calculator can do that. So go to the y equals button right here. It says stat plot on it. Um, we actually don't want the y equals. We want the stat plot above. So hit second y equals. And you probably have all the plots turned off like I do. Just hit enter on plot one. And we're going to turn plot one on. Okay, we can do a variety of different types of graphs. The first one here highlighted that's flashing is the scatter plot. It's just going to plot points. Um, down here you have the option of making the X variable and the Y var variable coming from different lists, but by default they're put on L1 and L2. And then you can make the mark whatever you want. So little squares, little plus signs, little points, little dots. I'm just going to leave it on little squares. Why not? And if I hit graph right now, very likely you won't see anything. You know, there's my normal viewing window graph. We don't see anything because our numbers in the list don't fit the 10 to 10 scale that we have going on here. So I'm going to hit the zoom button and I'm going to scroll down to zoom number 9. It's zoom stat. So it should zoom around the data points I've typed in. And now we can see our points. We can see that they are associated uh, or correlated linearly. Now it looks like a fairly strong negative correlation. Uh, now what we need to do is find the equation of the line, the best fit line that goes through there. And we can do that all on the calculator as well. So let me show kind of how to do that. Uh, I'm going to go back into stat. So go back and hit the stat button. I'm going to calculate. Uh, I did not want that. So go back into the stat button. Calculate. Arrow down number four, it says lin reg, stands for linear regression. Hit enter. Um, you can tell the calculator to go to whatever list you want, but as long as the numbers are in L1, L2, uh, X is in L1, Y is in L2, then it's going to compute it for us just fine. So I'm just going to hit enter on this, and it will do it. Now, let's put this down so we can write down what we've got. It tells us the linear regression models of the form y equals ax plus b. And then it gives us a number for a and a number for b. So put those numbers for a and b. Okay, there is our equation of our best fit line. Um, if we wanted to see that line on the graph, we could certainly go into the y equals and we could type that in. This is not a necessary step. But it's 
we could certainly do it and hopefully we get a line that goes through those points that looks like a best fit line and we certainly did okay well with this line we're now ready to answer the questions it says use our model to predict predict the weekly cereal sales if the prices drop to two dollars or raised to four dollars so what's the Y going to be if we drop the price to two dollars and then what's it going to be if we raise the price to four dollars okay so that's not a hard thing to do it's just going to require the use of the calculator to, to do this uh, so negative 15 3 5 8 point 9 times 2 plus 7 3 6 2 2 point 5 um, so if we drop to two dollars we're gonna sell this model tells us we're gonna sell 42,904.7 boxes Let's put our units on there and what if we raise the price I'm just gonna hit this go over and edit my two to a four it tells us we would save or sell 12,186.9 boxes let's shift gears now to quadratic functions in their graphs we already know that quadratic functions are polynomial functions And they are of degree 2. We also know that they're of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, I would consider that kind of a general or sometimes books call it standard form. We have another form, one that's often can be considered easier to graph and easier to work with uh, called vertex form. And it is, uh, I'll use f of x instead of y, but you could use y. It's f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k where the vertex is at the point h k okay. um, of course the a is then like the stretch or shrink factor the vertical stretch or shrink factor if a is negative it's a reflection flips over etc so, so there's your vertex form, and that's kind of mainly in this section, that's the one that we're going to be dealing with, although we'll, we'll look at kind of this general form as well. Directions in this example ask us to write the equation of the parabola shown in the graph. Okay, so we have two points. Uh, we want a parabola, note that we want a parabola, not a line. So don't make the mistakes some students do and start finding the slope between these points and do a linear equation. We don't want that. We want a quadratic equation. So let's use this vertex form. Okay, so in this vertex form uh, there are essentially five variable values. We've got um, this here is an xy point this here is a vertex point and then this is the the scale factor the stretch and shrink but there are five different places we could put numbers in and we have some numbers at our disposal right here in fact this point is the vertex this is my h and k and over here I have another x y point so we could substitute those four values in to this equation leaving only this a and we can start by solving for that a so let's do just that the f of x is the y value of that point so negative 13 equals a and I have the x of the point minus the h which is negative 1 plus the k which is 5 okay so we have negative 13 equals a times so we become 3 squared plus 5 
Uh, we can subtract the 5 across, so we get negative 18 equals, when I square the 3 I'm going to get 9a divided by 9, and we get a equals negative 2. Now I haven't actually solved the problem yet. The problem didn't say find a, it said find the equation shown in the graph. Well, the equation, now that I have the a value, I've got the a, I already had the h, I already had the k, I have the three numbers that I need to allow me to write this equation. f of x equals negative 2 times x minus negative 1 squared plus k. This is the equation of that parabola shown in the graph. Directions to this example ask us to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and sketch a graph of the... The directions in this problem ask us to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and a sketch a graph of the quadratic function. Notice this function is in a standard or general form. Uh, beginning by finding the vertex point. Okay, so vertex is going to be an xy point, right? We all know that. To find the x value of the vertex, we're going to use the equation negative b divided by 2a. Okay, so in this quadratic function, uh, notice the terms are out of order. x squared should come first, then the x, then the negative 3. So this is really the b. It's just out of order. So I would have negative negative 2 divided by 2 times the a which is 1. That's going to be 2 divided by 2 which is 1. That is the x value of the vertex. Now to find the y value of the vertex, we just have to take this value and plug it in. So to find this we're going to do negative 2 times 1 plus 1 squared minus 3, so that's negative 2 plus 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. So there's our vertex. This graph starts at 1, negative 4. Go ahead and put that on the graph. Now, it also asks us to find the axis of symmetry. Okay, the axis of symmetry. Now, the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry just so happens that it goes through the vertex. So when I found it up here, when I found the x value of the vertex up here, I actually found the axis of symmetry as well. Uh, x equals 1. Just kind of put an imaginary line right in there for our line of symmetry. And now we're ready to actually graph the points of this parabola. Um, it's got a scale factor of 1, so that means we can just do our normal squaring points. 1 squares to 1, 2 squares to 4, 3 squares to 9. Same thing on the other side, negative 1 squares to 1, negative 2 squares to 4, negative 3 squares to 9. That's generally considered enough points to kind of get those seven points in. There's our graph of this quadratic function.